Good afternoon, this is Chris Brecher with a Simpler Stocks free video for June 9th, 2016. So you can see it's about 15 minutes after the close. We actually had a special bonus hour today about this, trading with the MACD live trading webinar. The last hour we went over all kinds of trend lines in the overall market, and went over how to use the MACD. We also talked about just real time trading. We didn't make it totally dry where it's just explaining all this. We were going over it in the context of real-time trading. It was pretty exciting. We had a lot of people on it. As you see on here, when you do your $7 trial that you get 30 days, you get that access. The other thing in here you should realize in here is that when you go to it, every one of those is then archived. Reviewing the basics, the power of pin plays, and you go one after the other after the other. And all of them in there are part of your uh, subscription. So when you go in here, watch out for ARBs, ATR trailing cross, three ways to trade, bull and bear flags. All of those are included in your subscription. And there are a lot of people that charge a lot for that type of uh, service. And that's just part of your subscription. Other thing you get in here, email alerts. We put in index and futures charts. I try to have at least six charts a night. We've been having long and short chart ideas and then unusual option activity. I don't post every single option activity that goes on. I try to post the ones that work. And overall, the track record has been really good with them. So I just wanted to show that to you right away. Next thing I want you to realize in here is this. This is what the market did today. The reason I went into what the news, uh, uh, what our newsletter does is because today was a really, really boring day. Now, it's not boring, obviously, if you're short or something. But the whole idea is we didn't have a lot of big moves. So you go to the futures and main stocks up here. You, and you had the ES is up all of eight. You had the NASDAQ up 450. Last two days, the NASDAQ has underperformed. We're going to go over that in a minute because, in my opinion, you got to be real careful about the NASDAQ here. To me, it's a big deal of how it acts in the next couple of days. TF's up nine. We were talking about this the last couple of days, actually for a week, about how close, if this breaks 1150, on how there's a thin zone all the way to 1200. As you see, it's almost there. Even with the big biotech stocks yesterday getting trashed, and a lot of them are in the TFs. As you see, the, it's still marching toward that 1,200 level. You have the bonds again, curiously up 14. Now, anybody on any site that tells you, oh, bonds are going up, that means the stock market can't go up. I want you to realize the correlation in the last month between the bonds and the, and the ESs. Notice that when the bonds rallied, the ESs rallied. When the bonds sold off, the market was selling off. I mean, I'm telling you, it hasn't been as reliable as you think. In fact, when you go back here and zoom out, you can see this rally and this rally, they went up pretty much the same. So just understand that if during the day you're trading and you see bonds rally, that doesn't mean the market has to get killed. I mean, gold was up today, bonds were up, the market was up. As you see on the left here, Gold up 17 because the dollar was weak. Crude up because the dollar's weak. Transbus up 45, in my opinion, because the crude oil's going up. We'll go into that in a minute in there. As you see, China was down modestly, and the DE Dow, which is the German DAX, was down a little, about half a percent. Another key in here is the DBA, up 51 again. Another related thing in here is JJG, which is the ETF for the grain index, which has been going up too. You would think if the grains went up and gold went up and crude oil went up, the bond market would get hit. The biggest thing I can justify at all is that the bonds are going up, our bonds, because the bonds all over the world are almost at 0%. Ours are a bargain. I mean, like 3% compared to zero. In my opinion, though, is this. Look at this right here. Every peak right here, right at resistance. Do you really want to get long bonds when they're against resistance? I don't. I mean, maybe you do, but 
I think probability-wise, I don't want to touch him. So I'm not going to t touch him one way or the other. And that's the way, uh, at least for now, I'm looking at that. Now, going back to about the overall market, ES is like I mentioned today, new yearly high, close to an all-time high. Second thing I want you to see is if you zoom out, you'll realize that back in July of last year, we went to a new high too. Everybody thought we were going to go nuts and then we fell apart. Then we had an October where you went here and tested it, then went down. Here, everybody was bullish, way bullish. We sold off, went to a lower high. This one's more like last July. New high, now we'll see what happens. This is why, in my opinion, the NASDAQ is a more important uh, tell right now. What do I mean by that? Look at the, uh, the ESs on the left. And then put it a daily of the NASDAQ on the right. Now, I know the NASDAQ is underperformed relative to the uh, ESs in the last two years. What I'm watching is what would make our market go down? What would make this little blip over this high fail miserably? And it would be if this rolled down over. The last two days, the NASDAQ has acted worse. But the problem is, is it just the right here? The pause that refreshes before it blows to a new high. And this whole thing is the inverse head and shoulders. Like a little Stewie pattern in here. As you see, it looks like Stewie from Family Guy. The whole idea in here is put it on a lower perspective, 195. If it breaks here, sure, that's great. But if it gets under 4,500, all of a sudden it's got a big divergence with the ESs. If you put the ESs on a 195, you'll see exactly what I mean on here. Put that here and expand it out. Look at 529 in here. 529 was right here, 4,500. 529 here was 2090. Now you see what I'm talking about. This either has to catch up to the ESs, or if this falls apart, the ESs are gonna catch up with the NQs. So the next couple of days is very important in here. Like I said, the TFs are just doing what we thought they'd do. Second thing about the TS, before you think, oh, they're leading the market, go put it on a weekly chart and put the ESs on a weekly. You realize the ESs, like I said, are near an all-time high at 2134. The TF is only uh, 1,010 points from a new, uh, 1,005 points from a new high. So it's underperformed drastically. So if this rallies, that's not that big a deal yet. So it needs to rally so this can keep its rally still alive. So the next couple of days becomes very important in here. Now, another thing I talk about on the premium site is what could derail this market other than the NASDAQ. Number one, the SPX open interest and the ES open interest. The way it works is major indexes, especially in the summer when it's slower, the more open interest at a certain strike price the more the tendency is for those uh, products to go to that price. As you see in here, you see 3,000 open interest in the ESs. These are the options that expire on Friday. 5,000, 3,000, 4,000. But check out the 2100, 14,000. That's all I'm saying in there is there's a tendency to go down there even though it's 18 points away. I'm not dismissing that it can go down there. Second thing I want you to see is the SPX that expires, not today, because now there's a Wednesday and Friday. Look at the Friday one. Look at the open interest, 19,000, 17,000. That could be a big pull also. So I'm very much going to watch an interest of how the market reacts tomorrow. If you start seeing the SPX or the ES slowly start selling off in here, and roll under its 20, uh, 9 EMA, you could easily see that go to 2100 real quick. Another thing I am watching, I'm not sure of this at all, but I am watching this, is look on here on the 39 minute chart. Um, and I want you to see this on here. Let me try to zoom out. No, 15 minute, I'm sorry. I'm watching this right here. I'm watching the negative divergence and I'm watching the bear wedge form. Now you gotta understand that doesn't mean we can't go straight up still, but it's just something I'm watching in the back of my mind combined with that theory about the 2100. 
So that's definitely something to watch. What else am I going to watch? The big stocks tomorrow. Uh, today, I saw things like uh, Google at great, up to $11. Amazon had acted horrible earlier in the day and still ended up about two and a half points. We're going to watch on how the big NASDAQ stocks act. For this NASDAQ to be able to break to a new high, you're going to have to see the big NASDAQ stocks continue up. You're going to have to see the Teslas of the world, the uh, uh, Amazon, Google. If they start really rolling over, that's going to be a big tell that this is going to fail. So I'm definitely going to be watching this in here. Um, just so you know, with your subscription, you get the live chat in the morning, which is 9 to 10 Eastern. We go a half hour before the opening to prepare and then to have a half hour of a lot of fun doing trades and showing setups. So I hope you can take advantage of our offer. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I will be back with you tomorrow night. Take care.